In the rugged and mystical lands of the Viking Age in the peak of the Middle Ages, a fearsome people renowned for their epic voyages and violent raids dominate the known world. Guided by the stars and driven by a relentless pursuit of knowledge, the Vikings utilized their understanding of the natural systems around them to navigate the unknown. Feared for their proficiency at war, their remarkable achievements in science and technology are all but forgotten. Yet these were not merely byproducts of their time, but were the foundation of their superiority across seas and lands. The construction of their longships, capable of both deep sea voyages and river navigation, were only but a fraction of their engineering prowess. How did these intrepid seafarers come to master the arts of metallurgy, astronomy and navigation, and what secrets of their craft have transcended the ages to inspire awe? From the creation of the sunstone to the forging of Ulfbert's swords made with steel of a quality not seen again until the Industrial Revolution, the Vikings' mastery over their environment and resources was unparalleled. These were not merely tools for survival, but symbols of a culture deeply entwined with the forces of nature and civilizations around them. As the sagas whisper of the skilled hands that crafted Mjolnir and Gungnir, the weapons of Thor and Odin, they also spoke of the Allfather, sacrificing his eye in his quest for knowledge. Odin came there and asked for a single drink from Mimir's well of knowledge, but he did not get it until he had placed his eye as a pledge. Join us as we set sail into the heart of the Viking era, exploring the groundbreaking use of science and technology that propelled a people from the fjords of Scandinavia to the shores of continents. Welcome to the Chronicles of the Raven. Chapter 1. The Steel of Legends, Forging the Viking Weapons At this point, one might be wondering about the use of science and technology to describe Middle Ages cultures. The Vikings were not only exceptional sailors, but also adept technologists and engineers of their era. Their sophisticated usage of simple measuring instruments and understanding of basic geometry were fundamental to building boats with straight masts and keels, optimizing their vessels for durability and performance. This approach, akin to the trial and error methods prevalent in modern sciences, underscores the innovative spirit and technological prowess of the Vikings. Their skills in blacksmithing and navigation highlight their significant advancement for their time. So while not all cultures lead in every scientific arena, it reminds us to appreciate the contributions of past cultures to the continuum of human knowledge and technology. Now everyone knows of the Vikings' power in battle. Everyone knows of the hammer of Thor. But what if the Vikings had a weapon that would be almost impossible to fight against, creating the same perception from their enemies as they would have to fight Mjolnir itself? In the twilight of the 8th century, as Europe transitioned from the shadows of the Merovingian era into the dawn of the Viking Age, a revolution in metallurgy began to unfold in the north. The Vikings, known to history as raiders and seafarers, were also unparalleled craftsmen, wielding not just swords in battle, but the flames of the forge in a quest to create weapons of unmatched quality. While axes are the known weapon of choice, at the heart of Viking craftsmanship lies the enigma of the Ulfbert swords, artifacts so advanced in their make that they seem almost as if they were from 1,000 years in the future as that is the next time a sword of such powerful construction would exist. Inscribed with the name Ulfbert between crosses, these swords represented the pinnacle of Viking metallurgy. That is the branch of science and technology concerned with the properties of metals and their purification. They were crafted from crucible steel with carbon concentrations high enough to achieve a legendary combination of strength, resilience and sharpness. The blade itself was pattern welded a process involving the forging together of several strips of steel to form a singular layered composite, a lethal weapon. This technique provided both flexibility and strength, ensuring the sword's durability while allowing for a sharp, resilient edge, something a raiding horde might very much like to use. The technology to produce such material was unknown again in Europe until the advent of the Industrial Revolution, sparking debates on how the Vikings could have mastered it so early. This line of questioning and the methods of how they obtained this steel means a brutal truth about where these swords originated from and will be discussed in a later chapter. There is always a little truth in legends. We shall continue to investigate the Viking technology and the meaning on their society as well as the world's. But even without Ulfbert swords, the Viking Age blacksmiths were not just craftsmen, 
but pivotal figures in the Viking era whose skills in metallurgy and welding underscored the Vikings' roles as warriors, explorers, and settlers. The swords, believed to possess supernatural qualities and beautifully adorned with runes, were not merely tools of war but symbols of power and prestige. Beyond weaponry, blacksmiths crafted various essential tools and objects, contributing significantly to the Viking community's daily life and long-distance trade endeavors. The complex process of sword making, involving the reduction of iron ore and intricate methods like forge welding, highlights the advanced technological knowledge and skill of these artisans. Modern blacksmiths who aimed to replicate Viking Age swords provide insights into the sophisticated techniques employed, including the use of carbon-rich steel for tempering swords to improve their durability and flexibility. The production of patterned steel for decorative and functional purposes further exemplifies the craftsmanship and artistic expression of Viking blacksmiths. These craftsmen played a crucial role in sustaining and advancing Viking society, their expertise bridging the realms of the practical and the mystical, cementing their legacy as master artisans of their time. In Viking culture, a sword was not merely a weapon but a sacred object, imbued with mystic qualities and often given names that spoke of its deeds and destiny. The practice of killing swords by bending them before burial with their owners highlights the spiritual significance of these blades, ensuring they could not be wielded by any but their rightful masters in the afterlife. While the sword holds a place of honor in the annals of Viking warfare, they were expensive to produce and mostly for the upper class of society, and thus the known Viking weapons of choices are axes, spears, and so on. The axe and shield, in particular, were staples of Viking martial life, each embodying the Norse approach to war and craftsmanship. The Viking axe, much like the sword, was a symbol of Norse prowess, but it was more than a weapon. It was an indispensable tool of daily life. Axes ranged from the small, versatile hand axe, used for both combat and as a utility tool, to the fearsome Dane axe, a two-handed weapon capable of cleaving shields or armor with a single blow. Crafted with an eye for balance and durability, Viking axes were typically made from iron with a steel edge, a technique that allowed for a sharp, resilient blade. The production of axes, while less ceremonious than that of swords, required no less skill. Blacksmiths would forge the axe head, paying careful attention to the distribution of weight and the temper of the blade, ensuring that it was both light enough to wield effectively and strong enough to withstand the rigors of battle. The haft, usually made from strong, flexible wood such as ash or oak, provided the necessary leverage to make the axe a devastating weapon in the hands of a skilled warrior. No less important than the offense provided by swords and axes was the defense afforded by Viking shields. Round wooden shields, often reinforced with leather and edged with metal, were the mainstay of Viking defense. The construction of a shield was a careful balance of strength and weight, allowing it to absorb blows without becoming cumbersome something that gave them unfair advantage in their military excursions. Viking shields were not only defensive tools, but also played a crucial role in the tactics of Viking warfare. The shield wall, a formation in which warriors would lock their shields together to form a nearly impenetrable barrier, was a testament to the Viking emphasis on collective defense and strategy. Shields were often brightly painted with symbols or patterns, serving as both protection and a means of identification in the chaos of battle. Chapter 2. The Immortal Ships of the Norsemen Weapons of the gods are only useful if they could present themselves in front of enemies that required raiding, or lands to be taken, or trade routes to open. In the story of medieval history, the Vikings stand out not just for their raids and exploration, but for their remarkable achievements in maritime technology to make their adventures happen. Their era witnessed the Vikings leveraging their profound understanding of shipbuilding and navigation to forge a legacy that extended far beyond their northern European homelands. The Viking ship is a monument to the era's sophisticated craftsmanship, embodying the spirit of adventure that defined Viking society. Be it for trade, war or exploration, these ships were pivotal in shaping the Viking Age. The longship, with its iconic slender form and symmetrical bow and stern, exemplified this ingenuity. Crafted using the clinker method, where overlapping planks were riveted together, these vessels were not just functional, they were engineering marvels of their time. The longship's design facilitated unparalleled sailing speed, agility, 
and the capability to navigate both the open seas and shallow rivers, a feat unmatched by the contemporaneous vessels of the Mediterranean. Among the most illustrious examples unearthed are the Gokstad and Oseberg ships discovered in Norway and the Skuldelev ships in Denmark. These finds, preserved in ship graves or as shipwrecks, have provided invaluable insights into the Vikings' shipbuilding expertise and the pivotal role these vessels played in their way of life. The longship, known for its prowess as a warship and its utility in transport, was a marvel of naval architecture. Its light construction and the ability to be sailed and rowed made it a formidable presence on the waters, striking terror and awe in equal measure. The Skuldelev II, a notable example, demonstrates the longship's capabilities, boasting a length of 30 meters, a crew of up to 80, and speeds reaching up to 20 knots. Just so you can understand this speed, a sail ship in the 1700s would maybe achieve four to six knots. In contrast, the Nar, a cargo vessel, highlighted the Vikings' pragmatic side. Its wider build and capacity for heavy loads made it ideal for long sea voyages, carrying goods and settlers across the North Atlantic. The Cave, smaller yet seaworthy, served for both cargo and warfare along the coastlines, showcasing the versatility of Viking naval design. The construction of a Viking ship was a meticulous process, blending artistry with precise engineering. The use of high-quality timber, primarily oak, and the innovative clinker-built technique resulted in ships that were robust yet astonishingly light and flexible. This method allowed for a degree of strength and water tightness that was critical for the harsh conditions of the North Atlantic. The sail, a crucial component of the Viking ship, was made from wool, reinforced with a cross-diagonal pattern for durability. It was hoisted on a single mast and could be swiftly adjusted to catch the wind, enabling the Vikings to voyage vast distances with remarkable efficiency. The Gods of Navigation The most fascinating of navigational methods that no other nation had harnessed was the use of sunstones, crystals purported to help Vikings navigate the vast and treacherous Atlantic. Stories from the 13th and 14th centuries whisper of these sunstones as crucial tools for finding one's way when the sun hid behind the cloud or dipped below the horizon. The saga of King Olaf and Sigurdur, detailed in ancient manuscripts, brings to light the mystical qualities attributed to these stones. As the tale goes, in conditions where the naked eye could see no sign of the sun, the sunstone revealed its hiding place, guiding the Vikings across open waters with an almost divine assurance. Viking warriors might have chanted, Odin is with us. The scientific basis for this points to the polarizing effect of Iceland spar, a type of calcite known for its clarity and found abundantly in volcanic Iceland. Such a crystal, by splitting light, could indeed reveal the sun's position, offering a beacon to those daring navigators. Yet despite the compelling narrative and scientific plausibility, no sunstone has been unearthed in Viking archaeological contexts directly but have been uncovered in a British shipwreck and could help prove they did indeed exist. One thing, though, is clear. The Vikings found a way to travel, fast and accurately, for glorious purpose, where no one did before. Chapter 3. Architectural Engineering. Simple, but powerful. After rampaging around the known world and raiding with haste, a Viking warrior needed to understand the value of buildings for living, socializing, and worshipping. The Viking era heralded a period of remarkable architectural and engineering feats, seamlessly blending functionality with the natural landscape. The heart of Viking community life pulsed within the robust walls of their longhouses, multifaceted structures that served as dwelling, gathering spot, and sanctuary. These longhouses, constructed with an acute awareness of their environment, utilized local materials to create resilient and sustainable homes. The Vikings, masters of adaptation, modified their architectural practices based on the bounty or scarcity of their surroundings, whether it was the dense forests of northern Russia or the tree-sparse landscapes of Iceland. And with this geographic diversity, along came a certain understanding of astronomy, further solidifying their interest in scientific concepts but obviously fused with belief systems due to the limited knowledge of the universe. More on this later. A step beyond these domestic marvels were the Viking hamlets and farm villages, embodiments of communal living and governance. These small yet strategically placed settlements were fortified, 
not by towering walls but by the strength of their communal bonds and shared governance, a testament to the Viking spirit of unity and self-reliance. Yet it was in their cities, like the renowned Hedeby, that Viking architectural ingenuity truly shone. Here streets were laid with timber, creating pathways through clusters of longhouses, each echoing the societal importance of the community and the shared Viking identity. Amidst these architectural achievements stood the Viking ring fortresses, such as the Trelleborg, monumental in scale and ambition. These fortresses, with their geometric precision and defensive prowess, were not just military bastions, but evidence of the Vikings' advanced understanding of engineering and spatial organization. The construction of these circular fortresses, with their perfectly aligned gates and meticulously planned interior quarters, demonstrated an unparalleled mastery of fortification architecture, blending the might of the Viking military with their strategic intellect. The discovery of a thousand-year-old toilet in a Viking settlement in Denmark adds a fascinating layer to our understanding of Viking sanitary practices, challenging previous notions and highlighting a shift towards more individualized sanitation methods in certain Viking communities. This find, alongside the detailed planning seen in Viking urban centers and fortresses, underscores the Vikings' forward-thinking approaches to community planning, hygiene, and the overall structuring of their living spaces. Their settlements were more than mere shelters. They were the backdrop against which the saga of the Vikings unfolded, a saga of exploration, community, and an enduring connection to the lands they called home. Chapter four, astronomical knowledge among the Vikings a glimpse into Norse skies. The Vikings, due to their seafaring prowess and exploration, navigated the vast and treacherous waters of the North Atlantic with an intimate knowledge of the stars. Beyond mere navigation, their understanding of astronomy was deeply interwoven with their culture, mythology, and everyday life, offering us a fascinating window into the Viking worldview. While not something we classically use anymore, this would be considered vital to the cultures of the time. The celestial sphere was a vital tool for the Vikings, aiding them in their legendary voyages across the sea. Stars such as the North Star, Polaris, served as a reliable guide for navigation, known to them as the Lead Star, or Leidarstjarna. This, along with their observations of the constellations, enabled them to traverse open waters long before the advent of the compass, in addition to their obvious hidden scientific trick of the sunstone. The Norse cosmos was a reflection of their astronomical knowledge, with myths that personified celestial bodies and phenomena. The stars, for instance, were seen as sparks from Muspelheim, the realm of fire set into the sky by the gods. Constellations like the Pleiades were noted, albeit with different interpretations. While sailors regarded Polaris as the guiding lead star, others saw Arcturus as the wagon star due to its proximity to the Big Dipper known as the Wagon. The Vikings' understanding of the night sky was not merely for navigation. It played a crucial role in their calendrical system, helping them determine the timing of seasons and consequently agricultural activities. Figures like Odd Helgeson, known as Star Oddi, showcased the Vikings' capability for sophisticated astronomical observations, laying out a foundation for timekeeping and calendar calculations. Despite the scarcity of recorded Norse star names, the Vikings conceptualized the night sky through their own lens. For instance, the star could refer to the constellation Pleiades, used for winter timing, or to Polaris, the guiding star for sailors. Moreover, constellations were often perceived as singular entities rather than groups of stars integrating seamlessly into the rich tapestry of Norse mythology. Efforts to reconstruct the Vikings' understanding of the sky such as Bjorn Jonsson's interpretations of the Eddas, offer intriguing insights into their cosmological views. These reconstructions suggest a complex relationship with the celestial sphere, where mythology and astronomy merged to create a unique perspective on the cosmos. A small deviation now, just to explain how the science of astronomy means something now as to the Middle Ages. This sacred sky map was a reflection of Norse cosmology, where gods, giants, and mythical creatures played out the eternal drama of creation, struggle, and destiny. At the heart of this celestial mythology was the belief in Yggdrasil, the world tree, an immense ash tree that connected the nine worlds of Norse cosmology. The Vikings envisioned the Milky Way as the reflection of Yggdrasil stretching across the night sky, 
its branches holding the realms of gods and men, its roots delving into the depths of the underworld. This cosmic tree was not just a symbol of the universe's structure, but also a representation of the interconnectedness of all things, a central pillar around which the destinies of gods and humans intertwined. The constellations themselves were replete with religious symbolism. For example, the Vikings might have associated the constellation we know as Orion with Thor, the thunder god, seeing his belt as a symbol of Thor's strength and his battle against the forces of chaos. Similarly, the Pleiades could have been seen as Freya's hens, a group of stars under the protection of the goddess of love, beauty and fertility, guiding sailors and farmers alike. The Vikings' understanding of the stars also reflected their beliefs about fate and the future. The Norns, goddesses of destiny, were thought to weave the fate of each individual, and the stars were believed to hold insights into this destiny. Thus, the practice of observing the stars and planets was intertwined with divination and the seeking of signs from the divine, a way to gain insight into the will of the gods and the unfolding of fate. Furthermore, specific stars and celestial events were imbued with religious meaning, Eclipses and comets, for example, were often interpreted as omens, portending significant events in the world of gods and men. The appearance of such phenomena would have been occasions for rituals and offerings, attempts to appease or communicate with the divine forces at play. In this way, the night sky was a source of spiritual guidance and reflection for the Vikings, a canvas on which the stories of their gods and ancestors were written. Through their observation of the heavens, the Vikings sought to understand their place in the cosmos, drawing on the power and protection of the gods as they navigated the challenges of their earthly and spiritual journeys. This belief system is not scientific or technological, but it is part of the story that allows and encourages the study of the cosmos to further explain the universe. Chapter 5. Viking Trade and Economic Systems – Networks of Wealth and Influence the Vikings, known for their formidable raiding, were also astute traders whose expansive networks bridged the distant corners of Europe, Asia, and the Far East. Their era, spanning from the 8th to the 11th century AD, witnessed the emergence of trading centers and the establishment of intricate routes that funneled wealth along with exotic treasures like Arab coins, Chinese silks, and Indian gems into the Viking economy. This period saw the Vikings pioneering a bullion economy, where silver and gold served as primary mediums of exchange, a system evidenced by archaeological finds of counterfeit coins and evidence of smuggling. These economic ventures were instrumental in revitalizing Europe's economy, showcasing the Vikings' role as both raiders and rebuilders of the medieval economic landscape. Central to the Viking trade network were the trade routes that spanned vast distances, facilitated by advancements in shipbuilding and navigation. Scandinavia's coasts harbored numerous ports, which, while being piracy targets, also served as conduits for goods moving across Europe, Asia, and even to the shores of Greenland and North America. Cities like Raibe, Hedeby, and Kaupang thrived as bustling trade hubs, leveraging their strategic locations to dominate north, south, and east-west trade corridors. These centers were not merely economic nodes, but also melting pots of cultural exchange, contributing significantly to the Viking Age's dynamism. Viking trade was characterized by a robust exchange of goods, with Scandinavia exporting furs, walrus ivory and amber, while importing luxuries such as silk, spices and silver from distant lands. This trade not only enriched Viking society, but also established it as a crucial player in the medieval global economy. The Viking settlements often born from raids, eventually morphed into pivotal economic and political entities, integrating into and significantly influencing the broader European economic resurgence. The economic impact of Viking trade extended beyond the accumulation of wealth and goods. It significantly influenced social structures, political power, and the development of urban centers. Trade wealth allowed for the rise of powerful chieftains and kings who controlled and taxed trade routes and markets further consolidating their power and laying the foundations for the centralized states that would emerge in Scandinavia. Moreover, the Vikings' economic activities played a role in the emergence of a more interconnected European economy. Their trade networks facilitated the flow of goods, technologies, and ideas across geographical and cultural boundaries. 
contributing to the economic and cultural development of Europe during the early Middle Ages. This legacy, born of both conquest and commerce, highlights the Vikings' indelible impact on the economic network of their time, weaving together a narrative of wealth, influence, and interconnectivity that would resonate through the ages. Truth vs. Legend In the midst of the Viking Age, amidst the turmoil and conquests that defined the era, there emerged a legendary artifact that would become a symbol of unmatched craftsmanship and martial prestige, the Ulfbert Sword. These blades have long captivated historians and archaeologists alike. Recent findings suggest their origins not in the distant lands of Damascus or the Vikings, as once romantically conjectured, but in the Rhineland region, the heartland of the Frankish Empire. Despite this revelation, the allure of the Ulfbert remains undiminished to the Viking god warriors. The Ulfbert swords, most likely born in the skilled forges of Austrasia, nonetheless tell a story of far-reaching connections that spanned the known world for Damascus steel to be used in their creation. Despite prohibitions against selling these formidable weapons to foreigners, evidence suggests that they found their way across Europe and even as far as Volga, Bulgaria, likely as prized loot, ransom, or smuggled treasures. This covert journey of the Ulfbert underscores the Vikings' prowess not only as fearsome warriors, but also as astute participants in the medieval organism of society. Imagine the secret meetings, the hushed exchanges as these swords, deemed illegal to sell, were bartered in the shadows, their worth in silver and status immeasurable. The routes these blades traveled could well have overlapped with those that brought back the exotic goods and treasures that filled the Norse halls. From Arab coins to silks and spices of the Orient, the Vikings, known for their daring voyages to uncharted territories, might have sought the magical Damascus steel, believed to imbue swords with unparalleled sharpness and resilience. However, the true strength of the Ulfbert lay not in exotic materials, but in the mastery of Frankish metallurgy and the secretive channels through which these Norse treasures were distributed. A total of 167 Ulfbert swords have been unearthed, primarily in the lands of the North, where they were revered as symbols of power and prestige their distribution, predominantly in pagan grave sites, highlights the Vikings' ritualistic respect for such weapons. These finds paint a vivid picture of a time when the Norsemen, guided by both paganism and the nascent influence of Christianity, navigated the complexities of faith, trade and warfare. The emergence of swords bearing both the Ulfbert inscription and Christian invocations by the late Viking Age heralds the intertwining of belief systems during a period of significant cultural transformation. Thus, while the Ulfbert swords may not have been forged in the blacksmiths of the Asia or the Vikings, their story remains one of remarkable craftsmanship, intricate trade networks, and the ceaseless quest for power and prestige that defined the Viking Age. In the saga of the Ulfbert, fact and fiction weave together, creating a legend as enduring and sharp as the blades themselves. The saga of Viking science and technology is a testament to their extraordinary ingenuity and adaptability, qualities that propelled them from the fjords of Scandinavia to the far reaches of the known world. The Vikings were not only fierce warriors, but also skilled navigators, masterful blacksmiths, innovative traders, and insightful observers of the heavens. Their advancements in shipbuilding enabled them to traverse treacherous seas, while their keen understanding of astronomy guided their journeys across vast and uncharted territories. Through their expansive trade networks, the Vikings connected disparate cultures, facilitating the exchange of goods, ideas and technologies that enriched the tapestry of medieval society. Their economic systems, rooted in both barter and monetary transactions, were fundamental for the development of modern trade and commerce. In sum, the Vikings' contributions to science and technology were instrumental in shaping the medieval world and beyond, leaving an indelible mark on history that continues to captivate the imagination of scholars and enthusiasts alike. Their story is a powerful reminder of human innovation's boundless potential when fueled by curiosity, ambition, and a daring spirit of adventure for scientific discovery in all its forms and should be heralded.